Thank you very much for invitation. Um, and I'm sorry for this um, late start because of um, technical things. Uh, so um, today I'm going to talk about case case of single resonance surfaces of PICAR number one. So I I um, gave several presentations on this cascade thing, but the thing that I want to present today is um, is a little bit new. The the basic idea is the same, but I apply it to a different um, surfaces like toric surfaces and so on. So there can be some new new one. Okay. So um, but I'm going to assume nothing. So I'm going to uh, talk about cascade from the beginning. And um, every variety that I'm going to consider today is projective varieties defined over the field of complex numbers. Okay. So first, I first I'm going to start with the basic motivation why I'm doing this kind of thing, and then I'm going to talk about the Tory case as an as a toy example. And most actually most of the time I'm going to talk about the Tory thing, and I'm going and then I'm going to talk about little bit about the final case and um, the final conclusion. Okay, um, so the basic motivation is coming from a Kolas conjecture called algebraic Montgomery Young problem. So this Montgomery Young problem is a conjecture on differential topology, uh, which is about um, which is about um, pseudo free circle actions on five dimensional sphere. But this is, since this is an algebraic geometry seminar, I'm not going to talk about this interesting history. Anyway, this, this conjecture says that if S is a normal projective surface with quotient singularities, such that the second topological second batching number is one, and assume that the smooth locus of the surface is simply connected, then S has at most three singular points. So this is the algebraic Montgomery Young problem, and it is still open. Okay, so um, so this assumption that normal projective surface with quotient singularities such that second batting number is one is uh, appearing quite many times. I'm going to use simpler terminology, which is a Q homology P2. So um, those kind of surfaces will be called Q homology P2 in my talk. So actually, Q homology P2 can have worse singularities, but I'm going to restrict to quotient singularities only. And for little introduction on these kind of surfaces, um, since uh, in this case, since second batting number is one, PG and Q should be zero. So we have this kind of Hodge diamond. This is a singular surface, but anyway, we can think about Haji diamond like thing and this is like this. And um, if there is no singularity, then it is known that there are exactly 101 such Q homology projective planes. So this is a result of Prasad, Young, and Cartwright and Steger. So this is a very interesting result, but uh, since my talk is um, re related to the singular case, so th this is not appearing in my talk, but this is a um, remarkable result. And since the Picard number is one, we have three cardomy of the canonical divisor. So if minus K is ample, I'm going to call this as a final type. If it is numerically trivial, then I want this surface to be of Calabial type. If K is ample, then I want this surface to be of general type. And um, since I'm always assuming that the surface is singular, we can always think about its minimal resolution. And the uh, minimal resolution can have every possible um, Kodaira dimension. So according to the trichotomy of the canonical divisor, we have the following um, cases. And all cases of the Kodaira dimension can be realizable. So in the smooth case, it is P2 or of general type, which is a ball cushion surface. But in the singular case, it can have up, um, every possible Kodaira dimension. Okay, so this is a little introduction to Q homology P2. And let's get back to the 
algebraic Mongolian Yang problem. Uh, anyway, if you have any question, please stop me or interrupt me at any time because I have plenty of time. <laughs> so um, using this terminology, I can uh, rewrite the conjecture in this way. So um, there are some partial results on this conjecture. So um, without the assumption on the simply connect assumption of simply connectedness on the smooth locus, you can have at most five singular points. And the five singular points can only appear in the Enrique surface type case. And in this case, the smooth locus has fundamental group isomorphic to Z mod two. So under this simply connectedness assumption, um, S has at most four singular points. Okay, so. And also, um, if there are some known cases, so if S has at least one non-cyclic singular points, then the conjecture is true. And if it's, S is not rational, then the conjecture is true. Or minus K is NEF, I mean log Delpezzo case or log Enrique surfaces, it is true. Okay, so actually most of the cases are done in this case. So what are the remaining case, cases? So this conjecture is open only for rational surfaces of pika number one with only sing cyclic singularities, which can have at most four singular points, such that the canonical divisor is ample. So this is a kind of weird case because it is a rational surface, but the canonical divisor is ample. Okay, so, and um, there were several attempts to study these kind of surfaces. So, Actually, people have um, constructed such kind of surfaces. So Kieran McConnell first considered this kind of surfaces, and they actually created infinite families of such surfaces um, without the assumption of the simply connectedness on the smooth locus. And then Kola also constructed uh, in a different way, and me and my former advisor also constructed such examples and our method could cover all the previous method. And Alexeyev and Liu also um, constructed such surfaces with a very nice com combinatorial, de combinatorial description. So the surfaces uh, that can be created by my method and Alexeyev and Liu's method are the same, but their method has a beautiful combinatorial nature. Okay, the, the thing is, all those surfaces has at most three singular points. So um, it, it is compatible with the Kohler's conjecture, uh, even without the assumption of simply connectedness on the smooth locus. But um, no, uh, no example, there is no example with four singular points. So um, this is the main, main problem here. Okay, but the, uh, but the important thing is uh, there, there were four kind of constructions about this surfaces and they have some kind of common, um, common nature in the construction. And actually this idea was used in my, in my construction. So, so I want to call it as a cascade. But anyway, um, this is like this. So, um, let S be a Q homology P2, which is birationally rational. So this, this, this terminology is quite bad because this is rational, rational homology P2, but the first rational means it is birationally rational. And second rational means the, the coefficient of the homology is Q. Okay. So um, let we say that this surface admits a cascade if there exists such a diagram. So we start with this S, and take a minimal resolution, pi t. Then we have this smooth surface S prime. And we take a suitable blow down. And I want this new smooth surface to be a uh, minimal resolution of yet another rational Q homology P2, which is S t minus one, okay? And so on. And by doing this finitely many times, uh, this 
reduces to the case of funnel type. So every surface, every below surface is a Q homology P2. That means the Picard number is one. And the final one should be of funnel type. So at first, there was no restriction on the positivity of a canonical divisor, but the final one should be um, a funnel type. The minus K should be ample. Okay. So um, all the previous constructions of rational surfaces of Picard number one with ample canonical divisor, they have this common um, common birational structure. So the natural question is, is it always true? I mean, every it, does every rational Q homology P2 of general type admit a cascade, uh, that kind of structure? So this is the conjecture, and I want to call this as a cascade conjecture. I'm sorry, could you go back to the previous slide? Sure. So the the phi the phi k are blowdowns means a blowdown of a minus one curve on the non singular surface. Ah uh, yes yes sure. The, the um the upper part is um only in the smooth category the, the category of non singular varieties. So the, okay, so this is the blowdown of a minus one curve. Each pi k contracts. All of the minus n curves on yes. the non singular surface. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. And it, it, we're, we're, we're working with surfaces that have quotient singularities. Yes. Uh, At first, S has only quotient singularities. and. But possibly not cyclic. Uh, right. Possibly not cyclic. Okay. So actually, actually, there were several um, restrictions behind this construction because, in general, S T minus one could be uh, could be could have um, large Picard number, but I I don't want to want it to be happen. And secondly, S T minus one could have worse singularities also in general, but I don't want it. So I actually this says that. We, I um, require st minus one to have Picard number one, and it should have only quotient singularities. So this, um, yeah. Okay. So this okay. is the restriction. Okay. So um, and the first result that I want to present is that this con cascade conjecture implies the algebraic Montgomery Young problem. So um, if um, yeah, so if every Q homology P two of general time admits a, admits such a structure, then it will imply the complete solution of the algebraic Montgomery Young problem. But at the moment, I don't I don't know how to prove this cascade conjecture, and um, the proof of this is um, done by detailed information, detailed analysis of the P one vibration. Um, assuming all the detailed information obtained in my previous work. So um, if time permits, I'm going to talk about it, but this is, um, this is quite case by case analysis and the method is quite old and I think uh, not many people are interested in this method, but anyway, if you ask questions, then I will, I will talk about it. Okay, so this is basically my motivation to define this cascade and study. And then I wanted to focus on this cascade structure itself. So my question is, does every q homology P to admit a cascade? I mean, uh, I should suppose that this surface should be rational. So every rational q homology P to admit a cascade. But unfortunately, I found an example that if it is of Calabria type, then it can. There is one example that cannot admit such a structure in the in the Calabria case. So that question is um, is not true in general. 
but still there are some sub cases that it is it, it is true. So in, it holds in the final case, but actually I I presented this final type case many years ago, but still I didn't post it on the archive because of some personal issues. But anyway, um, the Tory case is actually uh, posted and I'm going to focus on the Tory case. And general type case is of course open now. And if this question is true for general type case, then as I said, this implies the algebraic more young problem, but also it will have several other um, applications. For example, Alexei F and Liu um, actually uh, constructed such surfaces, and actually they um, claim that one of their surfaces have minimal volume on this uh, on this kind of surfaces among these kind of surfaces but they couldn't prove that it is it really have has the minimal volume but if the cascade conjecture is true then one can actually show that their surface is the surface of minimal volume so there so the cascade conjecture here can have several um, applications okay so um now i'm going to uh, talk about the Tory case and final case. Okay, so first Tory case. So, um, so I already gave you the definition of a cascade, but that was the definition for the general case. And if I um, consider some special subclasses of Q homology P2, then I will change the definition of a cascade a little bit. Okay, so in this case, so we are in the category of toric log del pezzo surface of picard number one. Although I am saying um, log del pezzo, I don't um, consider the, the pair. So boundary divisor is always zero. Okay. So log means it only has KRT singularities. Uh, so the definition is similar, but here I want this blowdown of a minus one curve to be toric blowdown, but this is um, automatic actually. And I want the, those below surfaces to be toric log del pezzo surfaces to become number one. Okay. And the final one should be some kind of basic. So I want to define it. So um, for every for arbitrary toric log del pezzo surface to become number one, I want to reduce it to some special surfaces called basic surfaces. So basic surfaces are those things. So the first one, so um, basically in the Tory case, um, if I look at those toric torus invariant divisors on the toric surface, uh, so first I, I take the minimal resolution of the singular toric surface, and then I look at the torus invariant divisors. And those toric, and if I look at the dual graph of the torus invariant divisors, then it will form a vertex weighted cycle. And the weight on the vertex means the self intersection number on the corresponding torus invariant divisor, right? So for P2, the first figure should correspond to P2, right? So P2 has three torus invariant divisors, uh, which which are lines, three lines, so having self-intersection number one. And the second one is the Hirschbruch surface. Right. We have four um, torus invariant divisors of this form. So those two are the minimal smooth surfaces. And the following three surfaces are called basic toric surfaces. Okay. So um, it looks it could look complicated at first, but it is actually easy. So um, we can blow up the, the intersection point of the plus n curve and zero curve, okay? And then we blow up uh, the intersection point of the min n minus one curve and the minus one curve. Then we have this figure, right? 
and actually this also describes a P1 fibration structure. So we have two sections, minus N curve and N minus one curve. And we have two torus invariant fiber. One of them is a zero curve and the other singular torus invariant singular fiber is minus two, minus one, minus two curve, right? So actually this, um, this graph is drawn um, in order to look at a fixed P1 vibration structure. And do, doing similarly, we could um, construct the, um, the two surfaces on the right side. So we have those three basic surfaces and the theorem says that, so for arbitrary log surface surface of pecan number one, by doing this kind of special birational operation, we are, we, we reach it at S0, which are one of the one of the three cases on the left, on the on the right. Okay. So this is the result for the Tory case. <laughs> okay, so um but I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. there's always in this in this story there's always an ambiguity. You're drawing a picture of curves on a surface. Yes. However, you say that all of the curves have been contracted. Uh, all of the curves. So I'm um, in the definition. I am contracting those surface. curves with self intersection number at most minus two. So the minus one curve and positive curves are not contracted. Uh, yes, that was exactly the point I was making. Uh, you're drawing the picture and, you know, yeah. for example, if you if you colored in the in the last picture, if you colored the three minus one curves in red, for example, uh, yeah. everything else is contracted. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm just saying a way of making it more visible. Uh -huh. uh, I see. Yeah. I, I've I I really suffer from this problem with uh -huh. Ed. Right. Yes, I agree yeah. with you. So usually, if I if I'm drawing it on the blackboard, I, then I draw like that. But it, yeah, it takes so much time in the computer. Yes. So sorry. Yeah, no problem. So um, one more comment following my um, miles. So um, I'm 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 only contracting those curves with self intersection number at most minus two. So if I erase all those, then each picture has exactly three vertices with weight at least minus one. That that shows that the singular sur corresponding singular surface has car number one, right? Okay, so this is the main result. And but uh, you can you might ask because this is a um, toric log depth surface of pecan number one. So combinatorially, this is only a final triangle. So it's only a triangle. So maybe you can, you, you know everything about that. So what are you doing? <laughs> so um, so there can be some applications. Okay, so um, one is that, so, okay. So the basic thing is, if I have a toric Q homology P2, then it admits a cascade unless P11N. So this P11N, corresponds to the Hirtebrook surface, right? So the minimal resolution of P11N is the Hirtebrook surface in the in the second figure. And for that, we know everything. So I, I can exclude it. And all the other have this kind of birational structure reducing to those one of those three um, cases. Okay, so this is the basic result. And first kind of application is the classification. So already, uh, it it immediately follows from the standard toric geometry that such surfaces have at, at most three singular points. But we can have um, those final kind of description using the language of cascade. So as everybody knows, if sing there is no singular point, this is only P2. If there is one singular point, we have P11N. And if we have two singular points, then it should be one P2 
P1, PQ, and it should admit the cascade to the third one, third one here. So um, here, um, so you can think about the connected component. So you can group, you can group those um, vertices with at most, with weight at most minus two, so so that you can grouping, group it. Then in the second, in the third case, there are there are two connected components, but in the fourth and fifth, there are um, three connected components, right? So, for example, in the final case, minus two and minus two are uh, connected by an edge for all those three cases. So that means it should con contract to three different A2 singular points. Okay, so the third case uh, only arises in the two singular points case and fourth and fifth case arises in the three singular points case. So we can um, sum summarize in this way. So if it has three singular points, then it can admit a cascade to either one of those two. Okay. And one more interesting observation is that is the application to the case stability. So um, assume further that our surface admits an OV4 carrier Einstein metric. So this can be easily checked by using the um, uh, by computing the very center of the moment polytope. But um, actually, we can prove that if we admit the OV4 Keller Einstein metric, then we have this uh, properties. It is either isomorphic to P2 or it should have exactly three singular points, which admits a cascade to um, the final case. So if we, if a toric log delta surface of picard number one has three singular points, the cascade uh, can have two two different types, but the actually the OV4 Einstein metric is uh, having an OV4 Einstein metric is governed by this cascade behavior. Okay, so um, only the final final one. Uh, give rise to a Keller Einstein metric, and the fourth one does not give you any Keller Einstein metric on the surface. Okay, so the Keller Einstein metric is only coming from the first one, P2, and second one when n is zero, or the final one. Okay, so this is one um, interesting unexpected uh, observation. And one more remark is that. So the first one is, is a special case of the Ovifold Bogomolov Miyawaka Yao inequality, which holds for um, Q homology P2 with um, NEF canonical divisor. But of course, we are in log type case, so KS is not NEF. So actually, for log type surfaces, this inequality does not hold. But if we assume that S is Kell Einstein, then this actually um, leads to the equality case of this bogomolov miyawaka yao inequality. So I didn't observe it before, but using this cascade structure, I could observe this. So this is one, yet another um, unexpected observation. Okay, so this is uh, for the Tory case. And doing that, I was asking that so I, I defined the notion of cascade only for Picard number one case. And can I was thinking that, can we generalize it to a higher Picard number case? And of course I thought this cannot happen. So, but maybe it could happen for Tory case. So I was thinking about its, thinking about its generalization. And actually uh, I gave up presentation once that I, I did it, I generalized it to higher higher Picard rank case, but actually there was a counter example. Actually, it turned out that there are really many counter example because in that paper, I, I 
missed uh, one part of the proof. So anyway, this is the counter example. So this is the final polygon corresponding to a log, toric log del peso surface with high, high picard number. So this green ray corresponds to the torus invariant curve of the singular toric surface. And if I take the minimal resolution, then we have this red rays. Okay, so drawing this red ray means um, this is the minimal resolution. Okay, but um, maybe it, it might be hard for you to figure it out, but the cascade procedure is like, um, is something like erasing one green ray and change one nearby red ray to green. This is kind of cascade procedure. But if I do this procedure for any kind of choice, then it will lead to a polygon which is not convex. Okay, that means this is not a funnel anymore. So this this means that we cannot generalize the notion of uh, cascade for for higher current case. So can you could you say what? This example contradicts. Uh, so, um, in the this definition of cascade, the after taking this procedure, the resulting surfaces should have ample canonical divisor. Uh, minus k it should be ample. But in this case, if I do any possible cascade like like thing, then the result resulting surface has is not log del petzo. Minus k is not ample in any of the case. So if the Picard number is one, then we only have this, we have this trichotomy of the canonical divisor. So there is basically no problem. But in this case, since Picard rank is higher, canonical divisor may not be ample, numerically trivial or anti-ample. So this kind of thing can happen. Are you saying you? So this means that if you take any ray in this pitch, any green ray, and erase it, the yes. picture no longer has the convexity. Is no longer convex. Yes. Yes. Okay. So not only erasing green and first erase green and then change one nearby red ray to green. This is the procedure. And in that case, the resulting polygon is not convex anymore. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, so this is an unfortunate thing. But still, so, um, so actually I was frustrated, but I realized that uh, if I lose some of the condition, then I could say something more. So I, um, Give, give up the condition of being final in this special case. So in this case, I want to call it as a semi-cascade. So I no longer uh, want those below surfaces to be final, uh, apart from the first one. Okay. Uh, that, okay. Then I, ca I could say something similar. So, um, Okay, so there is no restriction on the Picard number now. And then the simpler surface should be uh, P11N or a surface of type O, so which I should say. So there are some more figures. Okay, so um, the, the five of them were the same as before. And there are, there are four new cases of appearing. Okay. So for example, what should I say? Yeah, for example, if you look at the eighth figure, when n is two, then there are four minus one curves because n minus three becomes minus one. 
there are four minus one curves. So that means the corresponding singular toric surface is a Picard number two. Okay, so in this case, we can prove that every singular toric log tapered surface admits a semi cascade. Okay. It is um, not very difficult. Uh, there are some non trivial things involved in the proof, but not very difficult. I, actually, I was using um, P1 vibration structure to prove this. But anyway, um, the thing is, I could find some, some more applications. It is not a big deal, but maybe new. So um, let S be a singular toric loop table surface of picard number rho with T singular points. Then we have this bound on the picard number. Rho should be at most T plus two. And this equality holds if and only if F S is the blow up of P11N at the two smooth torus fixed points. Maybe this is easy or well known, but I wrote it because it was um, it was emphasized sized in a recent pre paper by Dia Dai Dai sorry for the um, uh, Dai and Suyama. They were only considering the those surfaces with at most three singular points, but they have emphasized it. But we could say in general. So I I observed this. Okay, so these are the, so um, there were uh, ba uh, basic surfaces of type O and the corresponding final polygon is of this form. Uh, so um, of course, up to unimodular transformation, we could take other uh, polygons, but by taking this um, explicit coordinate, we could, find some more applications to case stability again. So um, the observation is that in, in the toric geometry, we can easily see that rho is bounded below by t minus two, the number of singular points minus two. Okay, this is of course trivial, but um, actually Keller-Einstein case is happening only when um, the Picard number attains the um, minimal possible. So this is one observation using this semi-cascade structure. So um, I have drawn many pictures of type O here, but the Keller-Einstein case only appear when it admits a semi-cascade to those three cases. So of course, I'm only talking about the singular case, so of course P2 has a Kelo-Einstein metric and filterable surface F0 has a Kelo-Einstein metric, but um, except for those, um, every Kelo-Einstein Tripetro surface admits a cascade to the, the last three um, cases. So this is one application, one observation, I should say. So, um, and one the other corollary is that the maximal cone of the corresponding fan are either all smooth or all singular. Maybe this is true in every dimension, and maybe it is already known, but uh, I'm not sure. Maybe some of you can tell me that it is already known in every dimension. Okay, so this is um, one um, observation. Even uh, without requiring the positivity of minus ks, we could um, draw some applications like this. Okay. Okay, so these are for Tory cases. Um, actually, I could say some, some kind of ideas on the proof or so, but maybe first time going to move on. Okay, so the final case, so I'm no longer assuming that the surface is toric. Okay, the definition is um, very similar. The, the difference is only coming uh, for S0. 
So here, the simplest surfaces, basic surfaces are, I want it to be either Gorenstein or KT type. So um, because it is a little bit complicated, I don't want to explain what KT type means, but KT type is uh, uh, very simple. They are very easy to understand. Um, considered by Kojima and Takahashi in, the, in their classification. And the other one so have only rational double points as singular points. So they are also kind of simpler. But um, Luke Delpedo surface of Picard number one can have various kind of complicated thing, but they could reduce to the, those um, simpler things. And there are 12 times types but um, presenting them is quite um, uh, quite much, so I don't want to present it. Okay, I'll just keep this. And the thing is, um, uh, for the final type case, uh, we can prove um, they admit the cascade. And by inverting the structure, we can um, have a kind of co complete classification. So um, to, so actually there are some more steps. So existence, even though the exist pa existence part is done, to give this classification part, we should know all the information about the minus one curves on the minimal resolution. So there are quite subtle uh, complicated things involved here. So, but, uh, so this is why um, it could take some time because the, the, um, the argument is too long, but anyway, so I'm trying to write, write it down now. So any questions? Maybe I'm talking too fast. There's no okay. questions in the chat for now, so. Uh, chat. Uh, I don't know how to look at the chat. No, no, there are no questions in the chat for now. Okay, good. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, then um, I want to say something about the proof in the main theorem. Main theorem means the existence of the cascade in the general type case leads to the proof of algebraic, algebraic Montgomery Young problem. Okay. So to do that, we actually uh, proved the following theorem. So under the assumption in the cascade conjecture, here the assumption means that the, uh, the simply connected is on the uh, smooth locus assuming that, um, and we further assume that the cascade conjecture is true. And this actually implies that um, there exists a minus one curve, um, which intersects at most twice of the whole exceptional divisor of the minimal resolution. Um, this needs some argument, but we can, it implies this a statement. And assuming that, I can show that SS at most three singular points. Uh, so um, because this cascade procedure does not preserve the property of being simply connectedness on the smooth locus, um, the, the assumption is used at the first part, and then we, we couldn't use that uh, property um, again. So um, maybe I can write something here. So um, because of this assumption, because of this assumption, um, and we are only considering the case um, when the surface has only four sing cyclic singularities, right? This is done by the previous result. But actually in the, in the previous papers, um, we actually proved more. So we can assume that SS 
four cyclic singularities. And furthermore, by using bogomolov miyao kaya inequality, we can assume that one of them is of type A1, and the other one is of type 1 over 3, 1, 1. And the other one has order 5. That means it could have three um, cases. Okay, four. And we, we don't have a control on the final singularity type, singularity. So this is the main uh, difficulty because there are, there are infinitely many cases for the singularity types. Okay, so um, we can first take the minimal resolution. Then we have minus two here, minus three here, and we have three different cases, of course, here. For example, minus three and minus two, the second case. And we have the case without control. Okay. Uh, then um, by this condition, we can guarantee that there is a minus one curve hitting at most uh, two components of those um, curves, like for example, like like this. This is minus one. We can guarantee the existence of such a, a minus one curve. So um, this minus one curve should intersect uh, at least one of those negative curves. Otherwise, by contracting the minus one curve, uh, the resulting surface will re lead to Okay, so for example, if there is a minus one curve not intersecting any of those, and if we contract the minus one curve first, and then contracting all the um, negative curves with self-intersection number at most minus two, we obtain a projective surface with zero Picard number, which is a contradiction. Okay, so the minus one should, curve should intersect at least one component of those, and if we hit only one component, for, for example, like this, Maybe I can just do it. Okay, so like this, minus two and minus one. Ooh. And uh, if I contract this minus, uh, if I blow up this intersection point, if I blow up this intersection point, I have minus three, minus one, and minus two. Okay, so this means that it it creates one more singular point. So I was starting from this case with four singular points, and after doing this blow up and then contracting all rational negative curves with self-intersection and most minus two, I will get a surface with five singular points. But as I said earlier, if it has, a has five singular points, then by rationally, it should be an Enrique surface. But this is a rational surface. So this, this leads to a contradiction. So um, assuming this, uh, assuming this cascade conjecture, I can guarantee the existence of a minus one curve intersecting exactly twice of the um, minimal resolution. I'm not sure why this eraser is not working. Direct. Okay. So um, I have now I can only consider when e d is exactly two, and there is also a case when the minus one curve intersect uh, intersects the exceptional divisor with multiplicity two. In this case, similarly as before, by blowing up um, um, 
three times, for example, we, we could lead to a, a surface with even higher number of singular points, which gives a contradiction. So in this way, we can prove that the minus one curve should intersect the exceptional divisor in two different um, irreducible components. Okay. As in the figure here. And now the, um, so um, in this case, so if the minus one curve intersects the exceptional divisor in two different connected components, as in the figure, then similarly by blowing up the intersection points, like these points, uh, yeah, like this, and contracting all those negative curves with self-intersection and most two, um, can derive the derive a contradiction because in this case, uh, by blowing up um, sufficiently many times, the the order of the local fundamental group should be greater than like this, this was five, but after that this will be greater than seven and something here, and if those two numbers are bigger, then um, um, this will violate the bogomolov miyaokayao inequality or generalized bogomolov miyaokayao inequality. So for, so this is a fact. Actually, this is proven by Kiel and McKernan that if S is a rational Q homology P2, then the OV fold Euler number should be uh, uh, non-negative. But uh, if the order of the local fundamental groups are bigger, then this will violate this inequality. So we can drive a contradiction. So finally, we can assume that the, the minus one curve in question should only intersect the final connected components. Okay, and maybe I should use, I should use this one. Okay, so um, the final one, maybe this is too dark. Uh, okay, so we don't have a control on the final connected components. And um, we have this minus one curve intersect uh, twice of these connected components. So there are several cases and um, so um, uh, until now the, the method was simple. So by blowing up several times, we obtain a new cumulative P2 uh, violating the bound on the singular points or overfold uh, Euler number. But in this case, we need some more ingredients. So if the self-intersection number of the corresponding irreducible component is um, less than minus two in both cases, then we can um, easily derive a contradiction because of the Picard number one condition. So we can always assume that one of them is minus two. And if one of them is minus two and one of the other one is less than minus two, then either by blowing up this minus one curve or contracting this minus one curve. For example, if, if this is minus three and this is minus two, then by contracting this minus one curve, we are lead to a Q homology P2 with five singular points, which, so, which is a contradiction. And the other case is a little bit Difficult, but we could do we could do some similar thing. Okay, then um, we can use some induction. In this case, uh, by blowing down this minus one curve, we uh, reduce to the similar picture with one less 
irreducible components. So we can do some kind of induction element. And the most difficult part is when the intersecting curves have uh, self-intersection minus two. In this case, we cannot use this blowing up trick. But in this case, by looking at this minus two, minus one, minus two curve, this will induce us a pure vibration structure with one singular fiber consisting of those three curves. And by analyzing this pure vibration structure um, in detail, we, we could um, uh, uh, finalize the proof of the theorem. Okay, so this is the main idea. So, um, okay. So, oh, so this is the idea of the proof of this theorem. And the references are as follows. So today I realized that I didn't upload the final paper on the archive, but by entering this DOI, you can um, direct, redirect to the PDF file of the file. So these are the references. So thank you for your attention.